I'm Jackson Pearson, guard, and I'm in 12th grade. Uh, uh, Jackson Moore, uh, guard, and senior. Coach, what is this team been doing to prepare for this season, both over the summer and early the school year? Um, I guess starting off, uh, this is going to be a new group for us this year. We've only got one kid that um, you know even saw playing time last year. So, um, yeah, obviously it's going to be a challenge. I'm excited about it. Um, but, you know, that's part of growing up, just taking on challenges. And, you know, when these kids go out there on the court this year, they've got to go out there with them. They've got to have something to go out there with them. Just like in life, when they go out there in life, they've got to have something that, that, that they're going to have with them to help them be successful. Um, and, you know, we want them to go out there this year and be great examples for everyone to follow. And hopefully some of the things that we've tried to teach them up to this point um, they'll be ready. We've got um, a bunch of kids on the football field, so really we won't even get started till Sunday. We open up Tuesday night, um, but we do have you know a few kids that we've had that we've been working uh, with. So you know, I mean, I'm just excited about the challenge and excited about the group that we're going to have this year. These boys, this team must be good examples since you brought them here today. Why did you bring them here specifically to represent your team? Well, <clears throat> you know, over the years. Um, it, these two are just like uh, most of the kids that we've, we've had in, in our program and we've coached. You know, we, we may not have always had the, the best uh, players, but I've always felt like every night we step on the court, um, since I've been at County High since 2000, I've always felt like, and this is going back to when I was assistant to Coach Jones, uh, who I took over for in 06. But uh, I've always felt like um, we may not have the best players, but we've got the best teams. Um, and, you know, when you've got the, feel like you've got the best teams, it's because you feel like you know you've got the best people. And we just had great people, and these two were, you know, just two more that, um, you know, that's part of who we are. And there's several more back at school that we could have brought. Uh, but these two, just they do a great job of leading. Uh, just give you an, a, an example, uh, Jackson had his wisdom teeth out the other day, one afternoon, and he was at practice the next morning. So we didn't ask him to be there. We didn't tell him he needed to be there. We just told him to take whatever time he needed to get over it. And, you know, obviously we did let him practice, but he was there watching just so he didn't make sure he didn't miss anything that, you know, we might have been going over that day. And that just, things like that means a lot when you don't have to beg a kid to come. They just, um, the expectations just been set from once before them. Uh, and our seniors always do a great job of leading and these two will, they'll do a great job this year for us too, to set the, set the continue the standard being what it is for the guys that will follow after them. As for both of you as seniors, what does this season mean to you compared to our previous seasons? Um, I mean, yeah, it's the most important season, but every season is important to learn and just be, learn from him, learn to be a good person when you get older, and just learn that it's not all about basketball through these years, it's about learning how to be a good person. Um, just in a position of leadership, it's just all about what I can leave behind. And we've got a younger group, and so anything that I can leave behind and teach them is just all the better. Um, Jackson, you mentioned stuff uh, that you learned outside of the court. Um, Coach, what have you been teaching them, like, more early or some other life lessons through basketball? Like, what have we been, what have we been teaching them? Yes, sir. That's not just specifically basketball skills, like life lessons and moral lessons. Like, what have you been trying to implement into your Well, <clears throat> I think I think everything kind of falls back on discipline. Um, you know, every every day we go in there, it's a challenge. Uh, it's a new day. It's 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 constant. You know, we don't stop. Um, so it's just it's just constant messaging about what what is the right thing. Well, the right thing is the right thing. What what is the right thing is the right thing. It's just trying to do the next right thing all the time. Um, and, you know, I saw something the other day, it, it, you know, when they wake up, the first thing they ought to do is make their bed. Well, then after you do that, you ought to brush your teeth. And I think if, the, if you just get in a habit of continually doing the right thing and setting a standard for who you are as a person, everything else will take care of itself. So, you know, we won a lot of games over the years um, just from, from, from just being, you know, good kids and working their tails off and loving each other, fighting for each other. And they do, they go to eat after, you know, practices together, they go to the movies together, they go bowl together. Um, and this is not really something we talk about it, but again, it, the senior group we have just always seems to leave that legacy for the next group. And when the kids come in the program, 
they know the expectation, they know the standard of what we expect. And it's just, it's really encouraging to know that I don't have to beg for that. They just kind of take care of it. And, you know, it's, it's been like that. And I always say there's probably gonna come a time when it doesn't, and I've got to do something different. But so far, um, it's continued. And <laughs> hopefully we'll, we, we will continue to be that way. Coach, kind of a follow-up yep. to that question that you just talked about. So if, if my history is right, there's only been about three coaches in the last 100 years at Tuscaloosa County High School. And just kind of what that legacy means to you, the, the, the style that you play. I know that you and I are both big fans of Coach Jones. So kind of talk with this year's team, what 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 is your offensive style, what is your defensive style kind of going to look like this year? Okay. Um, yeah, and, and certainly me being the leader of this program, I'm a very, very small piece. Um, of what this program is about. Uh, coach McKenzie was the coach for 40 years. Coach Jones was the coach for 30 years. And this is my 24th year, but 16th as head coach. Um, I'm sorry, 18th as head coach. So uh, I guess we're looking at uh, three coaches now. Um, I guess it was that three coaches in 88 years now uh, total, which I don't know that there's any other program in the country in any sport that has had three coaches in 88 years. It's, it's, it's pretty remarkable, but again, I'm a, I'm a very, very small piece to this. It's, you know, Coach McKenzie has passed away, Coach Jones um, is still alive, but again, we couldn't do what we've done, and I couldn't continue the legacy that those two guys um, left before me without, you know, the good kids that we have in the program. Um, as far as style, I, was, I think that was the other question, as far as just style, um, over the years, we were kind of an, a motion offense, which is what we've been, but However, about the last three years, we have um, been more up-tempo. We play 94 feet. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, everybody wants to talk about, the, you know, kids are different, kids have changed. I don't I don't know that I buy into that. Um, I think more so we have changed as adults and as coaches. Um, I've tried not to change, and we're who we are, and the kids have bought into what we have to do to be successful. But uh, we play 94 feet. We, we still um, – we still teach the motion concepts, but we do it out of more of a 94 foot um, combination of like an Alabama Huntsville, a Princeton, a Richmond, um, and we get the ball up and down the floor. We're getting up a lot of threes. Uh, so it's a, it's a very fun style of ball to play. It's fun to, you know, be in the stands and watch it. It's very difficult to guard. Uh, a lot of our defensive stuff is the same stuff that Coach McKenzie taught uh, back when he first started that I, you know, Coach Jones picked up from him. and. I picked up from uh, Coach Jones, and uh, it's it's um, so that pretty much will stay the same. Although it's 94 feet now, uh, we play 94 feet. And like last year's team, you know, I think the tallest guy we had was six one, was our post player, and everybody said you can't play that way. But again, it doesn't, you know, you got the peanut gallery. They're the peanut gallery for a reason, um, and the, you know, as long as you got kids that believe in that style, and at the end of the day, that's what they have to do. We have to do to be successful. Um, and we're going to be the same way this year. We're, we're not going to have a kid over 6'2". Um, so we're going to have to get up and down the floor. We're going to have to get a lot of threes up, a lot of possessions. Um, and it's a fun it's it's a fun style to play. It's a fun style to coach. Um, we make our practices harder than the games are. So, you know, it's very difficult to prepare for this because it, you better have some depth. And, you know, but it's like anything else, we've got to be making shots too. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's fun to be a player to play in this system. Yeah. This question is for all of y'all. So last year, y'all played a lot of tough, close, hard, hard-fought games. Um, you stated earlier y'all have a young team. So with the experience from those type of games like last year, what are some of the ways that y'all have been able to try to implement in practice to get them ready for those type of games going into this year? Me? All of you. Uh, all of you, either one. I'll, I'll go first. I, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's big, but, um, you know, just the competition is the competition. Um, obviously, the area we're in is very challenging. You've got major college players on, on all the teams. Some have more than one major college player. But, but again, we don't, we don't spend the whole uh, – yeah, we'll scout and have the kids prepared for the actions they'll see from those teams, but we don't spend any time talking about them. We're, we just try to go in and be all we can be with what we have. Um, but, again, like this year's team, you know, Nothing that happened in those games last year matters. Um, again, they do, we go out to practice and uh, don't worry about what's in the past. We just go out and control what we can control that day. And, you know, so we don't we don't worry about who we beat last year, who we didn't beat. Um, you know, we don't get credit for that. So uh, we just got to go out and, 
Every day is a new day, to, an opportunity to wake up and, and be all we can be. Yep. I think it's just it's just part of basketball. It's going to be close games. It's going to be blowouts. It's, I think it's just I think it's just part of it. I think you just got to you have the challenge that you just got to learn from it. Like like you said, like what happened last year doesn't really matter. It's a new team, new season. Like yeah, that's all in the past. We just focus on that one game, and then we just go from there. Yeah, like Coach said, I think uh, we just got to focus on ourselves, and then once it once that time comes, we'll have scouting reports for them, and we'll be ready to play them. Thank you. Coach, most of us that have been a part of athletics have a, have a coach or coaches in our life that were our mentors, like our second dads or second moms, uh, that helped define who we are as adult men or women. So what, what are you hoping these guys carry from your program to help define them as young men? Well, I, I think at the end of the day, um, discipline um, to, to start with. I want them to be able to to go out and understand that that they're better people. They're prepared for the what's ahead for them, life after county high, uh, because of the program that they were involved in. And I've been fortunate to be um, around uh, people that I've been around in, in my life that had a tremendous impact. And um, you know, even though it was football at the University of Alabama, it's still the same things win in all sports, it's always won. And at the end of the day, I saw how, you know, Coach Stallings treated the players there. Um, and he was, you know, he he was my dad away from home when my parents dropped me off in Bryant Hall back when we had athletic dorms. And the things that I saw him um, do and how he ran the program is, is how I try to run our program. And even though it's a different ball, we bounce this one instead of it being a, a football, it's still the, it still comes back to the same things and, and helping the kids you know, be confident in who they are and, and having them have a belief in what we're trying to do. Um, and it's just work, so we, we just always we try to continue doing that. Yep. Players, what has Coach taught you specifically that you plan to take out of high school or into college or in your life um, to help you succeed? Uh, having effort, giving effort for everything and hard work. Like my freshman year, uh, I would didn't know what I was expecting coming into the year. <laughs> and one day at a varsity practice, I was on the other court and they were practicing and Coach Sweet said, I bet I'll dive on the ball first and he dove on it. And then and then he said he's gonna run fifty stairs after to prove that he is still in shape and still can do it. So then after he went to the trainer and he had two <laughs> broken ribs. <laughs> Roll it over the ball. <laughs> so what happened was when I <laughs> when I had told them that I would get on the loose ball, they weren't getting on the ball like I as fast as I wanted them to get on a loose ball. So I told them the next loose ball we had in practice, I would get on it before they did. And I didn't quite execute the, the, the dive um, on the ball like I wanted to. And I told them not only would I get the ball, but I would run 50 stairs just to show them that I would get the ball and then run stairs. But I didn't. I didn't mean to break ribs when I go and hit the ball. I did not let them know it, it knocked the breath out of me. And I stood up and told my assistant to kind of take over while I was trying to catch my breath so they didn't know it. And um, anyway, when I was running, I told our trainer, I said, don't go anywhere, stay here when I finish. I, I'm hurting, but I wasn't gonna look. I didn't know what I'd done. And I pulled my shirt up and he said, and he said, coach, you got ribs sticking out. You, you've broken, I know at least one. I think it was two that I ended up breaking. But anyway, thanks for bringing that up. That's a good lesson. So, but you know, again, sometimes um, at the end of the day, we as coaches have to be the leaders and we have to, if we, if we tell them that we're not ever going to expect more out of them than we expect out of ourselves, and sometimes we've got to show them and sometimes it takes what it takes, you know, it's, we live in a world of give and take and there are not enough people that give what it takes. And well, I think it's, a, I think it's exciting that you get to play at the highest level in the state of Alabama in probably the toughest region in the state of Alabama and without giving bulletin board material or anything like that, just kind of what are you, who are you excited to face this year or what are your thoughts about playing at the highest level? Because that's something as, as you've grown old and you talk to your kids and grandkids, I mean, that's a story, that's an experience that, that you get to share with them. I think it's, I think it's good to play against great competition. It's, it shows that you can compete with whoever and it's just a great experience. When we play, we play. Honestly, it's just 
just another opponent. I'm not really worried about how good they are, what's on the what's on the nail of jersey. Like it's just we just gotta play the next game. So question for the players. This is not basketball. Uh, coach said y'all are like y'all do a lot of things together. Y'all went bowling. Um, who's the best bowler on the team? <laughs> Well, I mean, he was on the bowling team. I was on the bowling team. Two, <laughs> two years ago, so it's got to be me. What's your highest score? Uh, 180. Guys, y'all have any pregame rituals that you do to prepare for the game? Like, just not hunting like, music or anything like that? Like, personally or like at yeah, the Yeah, personally. What's your coach? I don't really have. Oh, we, we have no idea what he listens to. <laughs> <laughs> There's no telling. No, man, I don't. Not really any pregame rituals, just just get yourself focused. I mean, I don't think, I mean, everybody has their like certain things, but I would say me personally, I don't, I don't have something specifically. I just, I just, I just try to lock in, try not to distract myself with anything. I'm just kind of there, just, just chilling. Coach, uh, I asked you this when y'all play, when y'all were playing at Northridge um, about the community support. Y'all have one of the best student sections in the game, kind of like in this part of the area that I have ever seen. Um, large student section that go down from the bleachers all the way close to the court to the point where the referees gotta make sure that they don't cross the line almost every time. What does it mean to be able to have that level of support, not only from the community, but from the student body? Players, y'all can out answer that as well. Me first? Yes, sir. Um, I think it's wonderful, but but again, I, you know, we've got great kids in the program, and, and the student body loves them. Uh, and when they see the effort that they put out, um, you know, they want to come and watch them, and they want to support them, and they want to know that they're behind them. Um, but again, these guys and their teammates—they're they're loved by everybody in the school. They're loved by their teachers. I, I want my players to be the best kids in the school. Um, and you know, we get constant emails and stuff uh, about just great things that they do that really don't have anything even to do with maybe the lesson, but just things they saw them do coming in the classroom, um, doing things to help somebody else in there. And at the end of the day, it's just it's, it's just who they are and, and, and people want to be a part of it. And it's exciting to, you know, to be able to know that the crowd is in there. Um, it's exciting for me to be able to know that they're in there pulling for, for their teammates, or excuse me, their classmates, um, especially with what, you know, we require out of them on a daily basis. It's it's not easy to do what we do. Uh, we, we we expect a lot out of them, we demand a lot out of them, and, and it's not easy, it's not for everybody. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, when they move on after County High, um, we know they're gonna be successful. And, you know, it's, it's over the years, and I get a lot of calls about uh, jobs, kids wanting, need, you know, needing jobs, or, they, or some former players may be interviewing, after they get out of college, may be inter interviewing for a job. Well, when I get that phone call, a lot of times I'll get the phone call before they go in and interview, and I'll basically, you know, just tell them, hey, look, if, if you don't hire this guy, you're making a mistake. Um, and I don't ever have to, you know, beat around the bush or just, you know, not really say what I need to say or being honest because I'm a little worried about them not um, going out and being a great example, you know, of who they are. So, uh, you know, we're, we just we we tell the truth, and I want to brag on them, and and I try to help them, try to help all my players get a job. And when somebody, you know, and, and when you've been around a while, and people call, and you just know a lot of people, it, it helps. And when you can when you can turn around and say, hey, you need to hire this guy, and then you find out they're hired before they even go interview, and you don't tell the kid that, and the kids still don't know it, whether you know how they were able to help get a job. But it's just it's encouraging to know that that um, you know I, I feel like our program's respected. Uh, and the kids that come out of it are respected, and um, we've been able to help them over the years with, with jobs and just, you know, a, a lot of things and helping them get places that maybe they couldn't have gotten. Um, uh, so, yeah. No, yeah, uh, so guys, uh, what does it mean to have that, uh, have that big student section at home, uh, at home games every game? Yeah, I mean, we just, we just feed off of it. Like, the energy that they bring, like, of course we gotta bring our own energy, but it feels a lot better whenever you when you know people are behind you like like as a team like we're all we know we have each other's backs and whatever but at the end of the day as once those fans get up there it, it makes it a little more exciting just to know that they're there yeah i agree just them being behind us and them being so hype and having so much energy just brings us energy as we already have energy 